Alright guys, welcome back to yet another reaction video, and in today's reaction video, this one was uh, suggested uh, by quite a few people. This is the uh, 2022 Pacific Hurricane Season animation uh, by Force13, and we're going to be reacting to this uh, video today and see what happens here. Now, let's just go and see what happens. Oh, Dill. Oh yeah, Patricia. Oh yeah, Category 5 Lane. Category 5 Willa. Hurricane Barbara is now a Category 5 storm on our latest estimates. It's now up to 160 miles per hour and a pressure of... Barbara! The Hurricane Douglas is by far the strongest storm of the Eastern Pacific season Douglas. so far and the first hurricane in a Category 3 at this Felicia! basin in recent years and it's going to be another quite average season this year. We're expecting 16 named storms, 8 uh, category 1 hurricanes and 3 major category 3s. Um, and we are expecting that maybe June will be the uh, busiest month of activity. Uh, maybe not so much of a surprise actually, it is that big first burst okay. that we get in the so 16 tropical storms, 8 category 1s or higher, and 3 major hurricanes of category 3. And they're expe they were expecting the most active month to be June, um, which I can't recall if it, that was right or not. I think it was. Let's see what happens there. So those are the likely tracks that Force 13 were expecting anyway. After eight consecutive years of remarkable activity, would 2022 Eastern Pacific season continue to this trend? Or would it be below average due to the developing La Nina? This is the 2022 Pacific Hurricane Season there animation, we go. as analyzed by Force 13. Taking a very similar track. It was actually over the line of blast at one point. 60 miles per hour, one fatality. Oh, here we have. Oh, yeah, Bonnie. Of course, it did cross over into the Eastern Pacific. And it did. Uh, remember, it became a major hurricane. The first. Yep. Category three, only for like, <laughs> only for like a six-hour period. Re intensified a little bit. Derby. Bonnie. Oh yeah. Wow. Nice. Quick intensification. Down. 
fly mask, bruh. No damages, no fatalities. That's great. That's why you need to see more fish storms like these. Still. No damages, no fatalities. 85 miles per hour. 7.325 AC. Okay, so we have uh, Frank. Jet now. Frank becomes a category one. Jet now depression. Frank nine miles per hour, no damages, no fatalities. George at sixty miles per hour, no damages, no fatalities. O nine e. Howard. That's a category of one near the bar half mid size. Very close. We've got north as well. We've got the type of one these packs. 85 miles per hour, 983 millibars, no damages, no big guys. Again, that's great. So we have O10E. Not O10E, just 10E. I bet. Well, that was very short lived. Wow. The truck was still for like two miles. What I've noticed about this season though is so many of the storms took literally the same exact track. Or like near the same exact track. The only one I can really tell the difference from so far is um, Agatha to be fair. Maybe this storm will prove differently. We have two more storms. 11E becomes Javier or Javier. I think it's Javier though. Close to the bar half here. So we have K. Unfortunately, killed three in Mexico. Ooh! I'm full on, is that Socorus Island? I'm not too sure, but there goes K. 3.6 million in damages in the Baja Peninsula. Three fatalities, 85 miles per hour. Two more storms forming off now. And. Looks like some of these may be a threat for Mexico. We have Lester. Towards one um, fatality, it's an unnamed subtropical storm over there. We have Madeline. Newton. I'm surprised they've actually get that subtropical storm. I mean, they never named it, but okay. There goes Newton, another fish storm. We have another load developing now, and this has been quite active. 65 miles per hour, no damages, no fatalities. Orlean, I remember this one. This was a category four. Yes. That hit Mexico. Ooh, 500, 600K in damages. We have pain, and I know uh, Rosalind as well, another category four. Probably the worst storm of the season. So we have, oh yeah, of course, Julia crossed over. Ooh. Another unnamed, jeez. Two unnamed subtropical storms in the Central Pacific. I think this is Rosalind now. Yeah, it would be. Rapidly intensified this storm into category four. Ooh, four fatalities, a hundred million in damages, and where are we going now? Again? Are you serious? Another unnamed subtropical storm in the Central Pacific, and this one actually became tropical. What? 50 miles per hour? It's crazy. Um, Derby was the strongest storm of the year. It stayed harmlessly out to sea, peaking as a category 4. Look at that satellite.
Sir. A gaffer became the strongest May landfall on record across the basin after its 110 mile per hour landfall in Mexico. It caused minimal impacts across the coastline. Thankfully, that's good. <laughs> Um, this says Orlean rapidly climbed to Calgary 4 before rapidly weakening and striking Mexico, causing little impact. That's good. <laughs> Rosalind made the strongest landfall across the basin since Patricia in 2015, causing moderate damages. Okay. <laughs> The season actually performed well beyond the expectations despite the La Nina across the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, we had three storms in the Central Pacific, which were apparently subtropical. Um, so, yeah, the so, Agatha 110, Blas 85, Celia 60, Bonnie 115, Derby. Uh, the strongest at 145 miles per hour, Stella at eight, uh, 85, Frank at 90, Georgette at 60. What a break. Now, now we're running out of hurricanes. Howard at 85, um, Ivy at 40, Javier or Javier at 50, Kay at 85, Lester at 45, Madeline at 65, unnamed one at 40, Newton at 65 as well. <laughs> The last page, Orlean at 130 miles per hour, Payne at 45, Julia at 50, unnamed 2 at 40, Rosalind at 140, and unnamed 3 at 50 miles per hour. So, that, that is very shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalind, then Agatha, Orlean, K, and then K again, and then Julia. So, <laughs> Unfortunately, being the deadliest storm causing nine fatalities, and then Rosalind just behind. Actually, not just, it is quite far behind, but it's bad if any storms make fatalities, and quite a few did this season. It's kind of crazy how Celia and Blasden, and they didn't even go anywhere near the coastline. That just shows you sometimes how bad rainfall and generally surf impacts can be, just heavy waves, um, heavy rainfall can be um, in these tropical storms. <laughs> Rosalind up there, 100 million, Agatha at 50, K at 3.6, and Orlean at 500,000. Three systems missed by the CPHC, I presume that stands for Central Pacific Hurricane Center, a seasonal record, that's crazy. First season to have two storms to cross over from the Atlantic as a tropical storm intensity or stronger. First year to have two crossovers since 1996, Bonnie and Julia. Uh, strongest May landfall on record, Agatha. Uh, first crossover from the Atlantic since 2016, which was Bonnie. First tropical storm impact since in California since nine. That is crazy. 1997. That is actually crazy. And second El Salvador landfall on record after Selma. What what storm made that? I'm I'm confused. Um. Okay, I think it was it Julia maybe. Pressure 2015. Wow. So, every tropical depression this season actually became a tropical storm. That is crazy. And the strongest storm was Derby at 145 miles per hour. So, very strong storm. end it here but those are all of the tracks and look at those squiggly lines go um thankfully most of the storms took a very similar track to each other which is very good news um we can see a lot of the storms usually um they just trailed um northwestward um which was good but then we also had storms like orlean um the rosalind which actually traveled northwestwards instead and brought impacts to mexico which is not very good 
Of course, those three central Pacific storms, which are crazy. A tropical storm in November, that is remarkable. Uh, Two subtropical storms forming in very similar places and dying in very similar places as well. Um, Which I found pretty crazy. But that is going to be it for this reaction video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next update. Peace out.